to worship today we've come from a really busy week really busy world but just still our hearts in this moment that we may relax in your holy presence and there know that peace and that comfort that only you can give in Jesus name amen then would you get your hymnal and turn to hymn number 368 Let's stand as we sing.
Would you remain standing as we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed? Words of faith and hope and strength and courage and power. Let us join together as we profess what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> And if you want to sing with us, please feel free to do that. up here and just kind of sit in front of me if you would. Y'all doing okay this morning? Good to see you. Tell me your names. Danielle. Danielle. Kiernan. Kiernan. Layton. Layton. Bentley. Benjamin. Benjamin. Okay. 
Emma. We are so glad you all are here this morning. What I do, I have, uh, this is called my gizmo bag. And my, in, my gizmo bag can do anything I want it to do. Well, almost anything I want it to do. And so inside the gizmo bag are a bunch of gizmos. Now, anybody know what a gizmo does? I just told you, my gizmo bag, what? It'll do anything you want it to do. Now, how many of you know that things are not always as they seem? You know, you look, look around and you see things and, and you begin to wonder if that's really true. Well, who likes frosted flakes? Oh, you like frosted flakes. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe you might like Honey snacks better. No? You still like frosted flakes. Well, okay. How about how about apple jacks? Okay, okay, good, good. Well, let's see what else we got here. Oh, rice krispies. You guys are just easy to please. That's great. Well, you know, um Fruit Loops. Oh right. Well, those are, are pretty. So, so do y'all eat breakfast? Sometimes. What do you have for breakfast? Pancakes. What? Pancakes, yogurt, and cheese. Pancakes, yogurt, and what? Cheese. Cereal. Well, would you like a box of cereal to take home with you? I, I think uh, you both liked Frosted Flakes. Anybody else like Frosted Flakes? Oh, boy. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's let's see. Let me see. Here you go, Emma. We, we'd be nice to ladies. Oops. Um, oh, oh, she's gonna be nice to Benjamin. Okay. All right. Fruit Loops. You like Fruit Loops, Danielle? Okay. And honey snacks or Apple Jacks. I tell you what. I think I got one more in here. Sugar Pops. Anybody want Sugar Pops? Yeah, it's no good. Okay. Apple Jacks, you want the Apple Jacks, okay? All right, you got Rice Krispies or Honey Snacks? Rice Krispies. Now, I don't want you to eat those during the service, okay? The reason is, there is no cereal in those boxes. Emma, you didn't get something. You want honey smacks or sugar pops? Okay. I, I don't want you to eat them because there's no cereal in them. It's a puzzle. Yeah. We can tell because of the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read it, didn't you? Yeah. Boys and girls, things are not always what they seem. There are puzzles in those boxes, and you'll have fun putting them together. But I want to tell you about something else that reveals life to us and that's God's Word the Bible and just like these boxes you have to open it up to get to the puzzle you have to open up the Bible in order to understand what God is all about and so I want to encourage you when you open these up and you put the puzzles together if you would read a little bit of the Bible or have, have your parents read some of the Bible to you. Maybe start off with um, the Gospel of Luke. Because right at the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, we have the, the story of the birth of Jesus. And that's what you have to do in order to find out about what God does. So when you open the box and you put the puzzles together, be thinking about what's in the Bible that is a lot of fun for you too. Okay, so have your parents read to you when you open them up. All right, can we hold hands and pray together? Okay, we'll go this way. All right, Benjamin, grab, grab her hand there. Father, we thank you for these boys and girls. We ask your continued blessing upon them. We pray, Father, that you will anoint them for the ministries to which you have called them. Bless them and encourage them, protect them and keep them ever in your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, boys and girls. Take those home and have fun, okay? And read your Bible. All right. Y'all go back and sit down. Those, but I also want to recognize uh, our mothers, 
uh, some of our some of us for some of us our many of us our mothers are already gone but we have treasured memories and I want to encourage you uh, to share those memories uh, today particularly with your family and to pray for your own mother. So, but all those who are mothers, if you would just stand where you are, that we might uh, pray with you and for you. And if you're close by, just put a hand on their shoulder and, and uh, let's just pray for them. You can reach out to somebody if, you, if you're close by. And so let's just, uh, let's just be praying. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for these who have given birth to children. We're thankful, Father, for the ministry of your Holy Spirit in the life and times of, of each one. We pray, Lord, that you'll just reach out and touch these mothers. Bless them with stamina, spiritually, physically, emotionally, relationally. Help them to know your mighty presence. Help them to know the depth of your love that they've shared with us so strong over the years. Just pour out your spirit upon each one and fill each one with your Holy Spirit that they might continue the journey on which they trod. Just bless them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. And, and I, have, I have special memories of, I had, I had actually three mothers. <laughs> and, and a lot of folks do, a lot of folks do. It's not a unique kind of thing, but I had the opportunity to grow up at least a little bit under one particular for a uh, lengthy time, but others as well, two others. And so I, I'm blessed with that encouragement. And I want to encourage you uh, as mothers to know how very much you're appreciated. I'm going to preach. Gentlemen, children, how often do we take our mothers for granted? Hmm. They've always been there. They always will be. And I can go on doing what I've always done. Except it doesn't work like that. One day your mother, if she's not already, will be gone. And the memories that you hold will be precious. And I want to encourage you, those of you who are children, and by children, I mean anyone whose mother is still living. Uh, you're still a child. Amen? That's right. And so I want to encourage you to invest yourself in your mother and bless her. Uh, go read Proverbs 31 and see what a, a, a righteous, godly mother and wife are about. You'll be encouraged by it. But children, treat your mothers with great honor and respect all the time. Well, let's spend some time in quiet before the Lord and see what God might speak to our heart. Heavenly Father, from whom all gifts and all good things come, in whom is all hope and joy and peace and comfort and everlasting life, and from whom comes an incredible kind of love. 
a love that is so often mirrored in the lives of those who have born children. Heavenly Father, this morning we come seeking a deeper walk with you and a more meaningful walk with each other as we break ground for new vistas before us. We thank you, O oh God, for the horizon. We thank you, Lord, that we are going toward that horizon. We don't see what's on the other side, but we know that you are there. And we pray, O oh God, that you will prepare our hearts and our minds and our very bodies to embrace all that you have for us in our future. Father, for some, the future looks pretty grim. Maybe they're recovering from a serious surgery. Maybe they're dealing with hard issues of life. Maybe there are upsets and calamities and catastrophes even. Oh God, whatever the circumstance of your children, help them to know your almighty and everlasting love and that you're right there with them. Bless these, our friends and family members whose names we have called before your throne of grace this morning. We pray, Father, for healing of spirit, of soul, and of body. We pray, Lord, that you just touch each life, assuring them of your presence and your love for them. And Father, we pray your forgiveness for our own sins and for that sin within us. Hear our prayers, O God. Cleanse and purify us with your holy word and your holy presence. These things we ask and pray in the name of Jesus who taught us as his disciples to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn before the word is number 415. Let's stand as we sing.
Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, I've already mentioned a little bit about taking things for granted. Have any of you ever been taken for granted? Do you, do you feel like you have? Anybody? Wow, I only saw two hands. Is that really true? Okay. Tell me what it takes, share with us what it takes or what it feels like to be taken for granted. How, how do you feel when someone takes you for granted? What? Aha, uh -huh. used. What else? Not appreciated. Not appreciated. Hurtful. Hurtful. Oh, are you talking to me? <laughs> Scared me there for a minute. But she's right, you know. Parents will say to their children, we didn't raise you this way. And, and we say that to our kids about a lot of different kinds of things. But, but you're right. To be taken for granted is to be undervalued underestimated thinking that someone or something's always going to be the same way and never giving it any thought beyond that and so we take so many things share with us some of the things we take for granted how about this one do we ever think about breathing of course not but do we ever think to thank God for the ability to breathe, for air to breathe. You see, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about. What else do we take for granted? What? Life. Life. Oh boy, you can preach that one. <laughs> that's, that's a whole realm. Yeah, we take life for granted so often. Remember the, the definition, undervalued, underestimated, unappreciated. Okay, those are basic definitions, Dwayne. Amen. Good, thank you. All right. And what else do we take for granted? Wanda? Everybody what? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, what, what she's saying, though, is we take relationships for granted, do we not? Particularly among family members. What else? Carol? You don't need to raise a hand, just holler it out. Our blessings. Yeah. And the list just goes on and on and on. There's a passage that I, I chose for this. Jesus, this is Luke's version of, uh, of what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And he's, he's kind of given us an abbreviated uh, rendition of that. He's just talked, and, and the, the, the Sermon on the Mount was given basically to the disciples with a whole lot of other folks listening in. And so Luke is giving his rendition of that. He's just given the Beatitudes and some of the more practical and, and deeply spiritual things that, that we are to do as disciples. And then Jesus says these words. Now, he's speaking to the same group, okay? He hasn't changed venues. He hasn't changed sites. He hasn't, he hasn't changed crowds. It's the same group he's talking to. He then says, and why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Does that sound familiar to any of us? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why do you call me mother, but do not do what I say? Our father, our friend, do you, why do you, why do you say you respect me, yet you talk about me behind your back, behind my back? Those kinds of things. We often take our relationships for granted. Well, Jesus goes on. He says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts upon them, I will show you whom he is like. 
He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation upon the rock. And when a flood rose, the torrent burst against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who has heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house upon the ground without any foundation and the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great. There is another story that Jesus tells about a man, uh, a farmer, obviously, who has uh, had, had his crops were producing greatly and they were more, it was more than he could uh, can imagine. And he didn't have enough storage space. So he says, what, what am I to do? I know what I will do. I will build bigger barns and, and fill them up as well. But then Jesus went on and said, he says to this man, you fool, for tomorrow you won't be around. And who will own what you have now? The man took for granted life. He took for granted the fact that that he was gonna be around for a long, long time. Now, when we take God for granted, when we undervalue God, you say, I don't undervalue God. Well, think about it. Think about it. Ask yourself the question, do I undervalue God? Do I underestimate God? Do I appreciate God to the fullest capacity of my ability? Just ask yourself that question, not just now, but going forward in life. Ask the question of yourself. But when we take God for granted, then we also take his blessings, as Carol pointed out, for, for granted. We take the hope that is in Christ Jesus for granted. We take the love of God for granted. And that list just goes on and on and keeps growing and growing and growing. Taking for granted also means not ever to think about something or someone because we know it's always going to be there. And you know, God's always going to be there. But when we take him for granted, it's just like Jesus said, we, we say, Lord, Lord, but we don't do what God says to do. Is that a familiar scenario for you? Have you ever somehow said to God, perhaps by ignorance, perhaps by spiritual laziness, perhaps by just outright rebellion. Have you ever said to God, I'm not going to do what you want me to do? Maybe sometimes it's just by neglect. Boy, I have to confess that one myself. I have neglected often over the years things that God has prepared for me. Now, what is the opposite of taking for granted? And, and there are any number of answers to that question. You can answer them and give your own answers, and they would be correct. I kind of want to focus on relationship for just a minute. Opposite of taking for granted for me is being in relationship, in an intimate mutual, respectful, and honoring relationship. A lot of folks just don't believe that I can have a, a relationship with God. I mean, God is God. You know, you, he, he doesn't think like we do. He doesn't act like we do. He doesn't, he doesn't do things the way we do. And that's entirely correct. But he has made it possible for us to walk hand in hand with him through this thing we call life. He's made it possible. And as such, he wants to have part of every portion of your life and mine. Every portion. Because in doing that, he, is, he, he enables us to have a better outcome on our life. That does not mean that life is always fair or ever easy. It's not, and we know that. And it's because of the presence of sin in our lives, all around us. Sin corrupted the creation of God. And that's, another, that's a, a, for, for another day. But that's what happened. 
when Adam and Eve rebelled against God, did their own thing instead of what God wanted, set up something for all the rest of us down through history. That's why Jesus need to, came, so need to come. So you go back, go back before, go back before the time Jesus came. The time of the, the Levitical priesthood. Actually, the 400 years of not being anything really. And go back before that time. Go back to the time of the judges. Go back, go back before the Exodus. Go back, go back to the garden. Go back farther than that. Go back before creation. God had you in mind even then. I don't know how long that has been in, in terms of years. I, there's just no way I can know that. But what I do know is that the God who created us, created us for relationship. And if we're going to be in relationship, we cannot take each other for granted. A lot of people still say, and in fact, I've heard this response given, I just don't believe in God. And a friend of mine told me, he says, once, once when, when people tell me that, what I say back to them is, says, well, you may not believe in God, but he surely does believe in you. That's the way it works. God believes in you. And he desires that relationship. And when we take God for granted, that means we step out of that relationship to whatever degree. Does that mean we've lost our salvation? No, it doesn't. It just means we've lost the opportunity for relationship with the God who created us. When we take God for granted, everything else that is of God, we take for granted also. The very earth on which we live, the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the freedoms we enjoy. How many things in your life do you take for granted? You just don't think about them. I want to encourage you this morning to think about the things, identify the things you take for granted. And then, and, and make a list, and then begin to consciously say, Lord, I thank you for. And we start with God himself. Lord, I thank you for my relationship with you. It's not as good as I want it to be. Help me to make it better. See, the onus is not on God to make the relationship better. The onus is on me to make the relationship better. The onus is on me not to take God for granted. The onus is on me not to take his blessings for granted. The onus is on me not to take the life that he gave me for granted. And, and that list just keeps growing. So I want to encourage you to do just that. Make a list of the things you think you take for granted. And then begin to thank God for those things very practical things as well as the spiritual relationship. That's the most important thing we have. One last word. There is a, a big word, it's called uh, anthro anthropomorphism. It's when we put human characteristics over on God. I have to confess, I don't know how God's emotion works, except as it's revealed in Scripture. But I can't help but think, without putting too much of humanity over on God, I can't help but think it makes him sad when you and I take him for granted, when you and I take the blessings that God has given us for granted, when you and I just go about our merry way, never thinking we have to give an account or foster a better relationship between me and God, between me and thee, that's part of it too. You know the cross? Vertical relationship, horizontal relationship, that's all tied up together when we take God for granted. When we undervalue God, and you, you're gonna say, I would never undervalue God, but you know, and, and, and you would not do that intentionally. I understand that I would not. And yet I, I know there are times in my life when I disregard God. And I want to encourage all of us to stop doing that. 
to thank God for the things we ordinarily take for granted and begin to have that grateful heart that builds the relationship between you and God. Amen. Heavenly Father, sometimes we just kind of go through life without thinking. Just taking the next step because it's there to take. And sometimes, Lord, we have said, Lord, Lord, called you Lord and yet have not done what you said to do. We ask your forgiveness and receive it and know that you enable us through your Holy Spirit not only to take the next step, but to take it confidently, to take it in the assurance of our relationship with you, to take it in the hope that you have given us in Christ Jesus. Lord, we want you in our lives. We want you in the life of this church family. We want you in our individual lives. And pray, Heavenly Father, that we may always walk with you conscious of your holy presence and your great provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is 399. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, for thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Wouldn't that, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be the life to live? Let them flow in ceaseless praise. While we sing this closing hymn, I want to ask you simply to commit your life anew and afresh to not taking God for granted. Let's stand as we sing. consecrated Lord to thee that's a great prayer and I encourage you to pray that prayer as you go out into the world because you're going to be in places and times and with folks who might need to know that your life is consecrated unto God and that you have a word for them God bless you God keep you God support you God sustain you God encourage you in the week that is before you amen <laughs>